Harvey here to the near side. And Damian sets up. Boy, he's going to be forced out of the pocket, looking downfield. Fires way down. Lindworth's in the end zone. Touchdown, FAMU. That's going to be a 36-yard strike from Damian Fleming to Lindworth Lennon. Hit and drop. Woo! Looking to pass again. Round is out and sacked. Pulls it now. Shoots across the middle. Touchdown, FAMU! Right on the money, and the Rattlers are back. Flushed out of the pocket. Rattlers have a spot. Can we make the tackle? We do. Fires toward the end zone. This one is picked off. That's around the first down. Move those chains. Touchdown, FAMU. Down to the five-yard line. Move those chains. It's a first down for Florida a &M. Fires. It's picked off. The Rattlers, with 45 seconds left, have shut the door. Hello and welcome to the Coach Earl Holmes Show. I'm Keith Miles, your host, along with the head rattler, Coach Earl Holmes. And Coach, uh, doesn't get much bigger than FAMU and Tennessee State in terms of rivalry. Next to Bethune-Cookman, without question, this is probably our biggest rivalry. Uh, yes, indeed it is, Keith. And uh, we wanted to go out and put on a great show for the fans as well as the people that's concerned us about Rattler Nation. And uh, everything could have went wrong, went wrong, Keith, to be honest with you. Yeah, let's talk about... Uh, what went wrong, Coach? I mean, they got off to an early start, a quick pick six, and from that point on, it seemed like we were trying to trying to play catch up in a prize fight, and uh, every time we make a move, they come back on us. Well, uh, it, it starts with, with the coaching staff. I, I thought we put together a great game plan, and uh, once we started the game, there was no line of communication. Uh, our headsets wasn't working, and you know, also our Coach Gray was out. so. Uh, there was no way we can tell the kids about exactly what was going on as opposed to being proactive we were reactive and we never got in front of it because uh, again there was no line of communication so once we get the ball off we was pretty much just coaching from afar a lot of the fans at a football game they don't understand that while all of the pomp and circumstance and the bands playing and all that's going on there's a whole lot of communication going on between the coaches on the field and the coaches in the box who are watching the adjustments to the play so explain that and t and how that is so critical to what's going on on the field. well when you, you're talking about as far as the deep points the defensive standpoint you try to create the uh, right matchups when they come out with their speed personnel you want to put your speed personnel out there when they come out with the power uh, offense you want to come out your power defense well we had no way of relaying that to the, the coaches as far as in what they were doing because we had no line of communication and even on the offensive side of the ball which if you notice we came out with uh, no huddle because there was no way to let Damian know exactly what coverages we were seeing before the ball snapped so Damian was out there freelancing based off again there was no communication so uh as it, it, bad as it looked and as uh, bad as it seemed I, I, we're going to learn a lot from this simply because you know, when you when you had that victory, it's easy to make those adjustments. But when you really look at it and you understand and the kids understand, I think we're going to grow from this simply because when we look at it and guys who play 60 minutes, we can make that adjustment and say, hey, this is what the guys saw. We understand what they were thought they were seeing. And that's what they, you know, they did because that first pick six, you know, had we had someone to tell Damian what, how they was rolling the coverage up from the, from the top up, then that could have been prevented. But, you know, I don't want to discredit anything that Tennessee yeah, State did yeah, because we, it was a good game. And no doubt about it, it was a good game. And I tipped my head off to Coach Reed. Those guys came and they played well. It's just, you know, we were down two soldiers as far as communication as well as our uh, Coach Gray. Yeah, uh, we don't want to take anything away from Tennessee State. Obviously, they came well prepared right. and they played a, an outstanding ball game. But without communications from the press box to the field, uh, as you said, the uh, you're, you're playing with a short stick. It, it's almost asking the kids to go out there without a helmet on, Keith, to, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I, again, it, it, you got to make adjustments. This game is all about, you know, countering and, and making adjustments and strategies and things of that nature. Well, when you can't, when you can't strategize what you're trying to get done, I mean, it's, it's pretty much over from the start, you know. But halftime, we did make some adjustments, and uh, – <laughs> then they made some adjustments during the game, and again, we were, were not able to make adjustments. All right, Coach, we're going to go to a break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at first-half highlights of FAMU and Tennessee State after this timeout on Coach Earl Holmes' show. You've been involved in an accident. You feel like today is going to be a bad day. You have headaches, neck pain, back pain. Well, call us here at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab where we have your neck and your back. Call me, Dr. Ways, 
at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab. We're located at 1711 South Gaston Street. Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, your local accident doctors. Call us at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, where you control your case. We got your neck and your back. Metron Contracting is a certified minority business specializing in the installation of commercial plumbing and underground utilities, including water, sewer, and fire line. Its owners, Caleb and Sharon Hanna, have over 30 years experience in the Tallahassee area. Metron also offers installation of concrete sidewalks, erosion control, and construction management. On your next project, think Metron and call 850-681-9058. Again, 850-681-9058. Welcome back to the Coach Earl Holmes Show. We're with the head coach, Earl Holmes, in his office. And, Coach, uh, this was a beautiful afternoon in town. I know a lot of people have been talking about the 2 o'clock kickoff, but mm -hmm. the weather was perfect. Oh, it was a great day for football, a great day for football. So the guys were excited. We were excited, and uh, we couldn't wait to kick the ball off. Mm -hmm. And and we had a, a good crowd, mm -hmm. not quite the crowd I think we wanted for the home season opener, but a good crowd, and they certainly came to help cheer on the rally. Well, you know, I, I thought the idea situation would be 20000 or more because mm -hmm. we're talking about restoring pride. Mm -hmm. And I uh, also shared a convocation that it takes the 12th man, not just the band, the people in the stands. And, you know, we out there representing the orange and green, and we want the uh, kids to understand how much we care about them. But it was a pretty good crowd, but I was expecting more. But, hey, you know, we got still a lot of them to play. All right, Coach, let's go to first half highlights. And here we go. The Tigers kick off to the Rattlers, decked out today in the orange and green. The orange helmets, of course, and the green uniforms mm -hmm. with the white numbers. And, uh, Coach, here we go. Early on in the ball game, this he, is uh, Damien, and he connects. He's connecting. He's, if you see, we're going no huddle because, again, we don't have no communication. So, Damien dropped back. He's, he's playing what he sees and what, what, he, what he believes in, what we've seen all week. But, again, we, you know, we're able to make adjustments, then certain things wouldn't happen. Yeah. You know, so, like, you know, the pick six here. So, uh, again, uh, you know, I great, appreciate the effort by Damien there, but uh, I can't. I can't get upset with Damian about that pass. Had we had a better job of communicating, maybe that wouldn't have happened. But we came in the second half trying to run the ball because that's what we wanted to do well. Mm -hmm. Again, we tried to get big on big, but they got a pretty stout uh, defensive line. Mm -hmm. And that was James Owens. And James turns the corner, picks up some yards here. Good pressure by Tennessee State coach. And uh, they they put some pressure on Damian well, Owens. They, we, we talked about the game be won up front. Mm -hmm. And, I, oh, there's a big miss opportunity mm -hmm. by Akil Blunt there. But he was in the right place at the right time. So we just tried to put some pressure on him and get after him and I'll play some physical football. Yeah, we're playing against a kid. Uh, coach uh, Ronald Butler, Tallahassee Local boy kid. from Lincoln High Local School. Kid. I know <laughs> you trying to get him to come to FAMU too, but he decided to go to Tennessee. So he's going to be a good one for them. Uh, down a great the road one too. for him. So we got to find a way. We'll see him again next year. We got to find a way to neutralize him. Yeah. But I thought there was some sloppy play there, some missed tackles there. Yeah. But once we get the kid down, we got to keep him down. Yeah. Tim Broton, he uh, had a pretty big afternoon running the football. And here we go. We're going to try to get things going again. And this is a great return by James Owen. Well, that's what a good team do. You got to find a way uh, to bounce back. You go. Know, you can't let them steal big mo momentum. You got to go in there and play. I thought Harvard was down here, but at the same time, you got to play to the whistles blowing. Mm -hmm. And that's another way you just you know you step on your big toe. And we got to eliminate those uh, mistakes. Yeah, another another turnover here, and a good team coach uh, like Tennessee State. And you told us going into this ball game, we should have had a fumble here. right there. And that's what it's about. You know, sometimes that ball is going to bounce your way, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's not. But we got to make the play. You can't miss the big opportunities to make big plays, and we had a chance to have a sack and a fumble. All right, here we go. Damian back, fires across the middle here, and uh, this pass, uh, some pass in the Actually, I think they grabbed uh, Linworth's Linworth. yeah. face mask. They, they sure did. Yeah, and we, we got the, the personal foul tacked on to that, and this is just a great effort. Well, and when you get Damian outside the pocket, believe me, he's very dangerous because he's a two-dimensional guy. He can run just as well as he can pass it. So that's what we wanted to do. Now we're we establish, establishing the run. We plan on their side of the ball, and I thought it was pretty much even. But again, we got to handle these miscues. Mm -hmm. Th these type of things really hurt you because you're talking about first and goal and second and goal. Mm -hmm. But one thing about Fleming, again, when he's buying time, he's on the run, you won't find anybody better. Yeah, uh, here at Linworth, 
and Linworth is pretty good at getting open, Coach. Uh, when the play breaks down, he finds a way to get in the open spot. Those guys for the last two games, if I have a one-two punch that's going, is working very well for us. Uh, this way, uh, Keith, I was pretty much disappointed what happened. There were some blocks in the back, things of that nature. I see two there. But, again, we got to find a way to play to the whistle's blown. Mm -hmm. And that's what you can't do. You can't give up big mo like that. Again, we just came off a touchdown. We turned back around. Now they had the momentum. Mm -hmm. Right at the next play with a kickoff return for a touchdown. Yeah, that is a, a momentum shifter, especially it, after you go down and score. It really is. And, I, I again, we got to understand the importance of going north and south. All right, you know, we they were going to run the ball, we were going to run the ball, but we got to make those tackles. Yeah, here we go defensively. Now, uh, Tennessee State coach, the strategy now is they've got the lead. They want to take ticks off the clock, and they're going to open up with a pretty good running game. But we're going to play some good defense. This is Michael Ducree, second game oh, in a row. That kid he's is been playing, at, he's playing at a high level. He's yeah. really being a senior out there, and they're showing. Yeah. So, uh, again, that's a great job by Devin, Devin Roberts. Roberts yeah. field. We knew there was going to be a defensive game, but we can't turn the ball over. And here's Terry off the end with a field goal block. We take three off the board. Now the momentum's back in our hands. We got to do something with it because we knew, hey, both teams are well coached, and uh, we're a defensive team. Both teams are. So you got to find a way to win. You got to control the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I know at this point in the game, you were really wishing those headphones were working because <laughs> now, now uh, you're back, right back in the as, thick exactly. of the fight. You know, we had a lot of opportunities, and that's why I was said earlier, you know, we're going to learn from this loss yeah. simply because guys out there playing with no helmet. And uh, to just still go out there and make some people miss, fall forward and play hard as they did, sometimes the score doesn't indicate what type of things happen during the game. But we'll get it corrected, especially with that community. Once we get us some headsets and uh, get back to playing Rattler football, everything else will take care of itself. All right, here we go. Uh, this is uh, Ronald Butler, outstanding young quarterback, freshman from Tallahassee. But again, the Rattlers play breaks down, and the Rattlers find a way to try and shut down the Tennessee State offense. Defense swarming, uh, going 11 guys to the ball. That's what you want. Now, Damon, again, Damon's calling his own plays simply because there's no communication. But he's a quarterback. Of course, he want to throw first, and we want to run first. But at this time, we down keep, so we got to find a way to come back. And we all feel comfortable about Damon stepping up in the pocket of being Damon. Yeah. Uh, this is right before the half. We just took a shot. But, uh, hey, you know, that's what you have to do. All right, it's halftime and the Rattlers are down but not out. And uh, we felt like uh, although Tennessee State uh, had, they, they scored on two big plays, Coach. Right. They got the pick six and they got the kick return, uh, the kickoff return for the touchdown. And if you take those two scores away, we, we, we right seven, there. Seven. We right and that's what I talked to the defense about. First I addressed the team with what I thought exactly what was going on and I told the coaches hey we got to be patient we got to get his headset mm -hmm. fits to talk to the kids to make adjustments but hey at the same time we got the momentum on our side we knew Tennessee State was going to get the ball back in the second half but we just want to establish establish the run on offense as well as understand what they have been doing us the first 30 minutes in the game and see if we can create uh, some turnovers on defense. All right we're going to come back and take a look at second half highlights of FAMU and the Big Blue Tigers of Tennessee State after this time out on the Coach Earl Holmes Show. Our community is amazing, but we can always make it better. Let's give the children the encouragement and education they deserve. I'm Brian Bullware, and I care about our community. That's what makes Palmetto Security Services a dedicated company. program supports all athletic programs at the university. Join the Rattler Booster Club. It's not too late. Our community is amazing, but we can always make it better. Let's give the children the encouragement and education they deserve. I'm Brian Bullware, and I care about our community. That's what makes Palmetto Security Services a dedicated company.
Welcome back to the Coach Earl Holmes Show. Coach is 21-7 at the half. The Rattlers are down, not out, mm -hmm. um, playing some good defense. Actually, the two big plays right. uh, put Tennessee State ahead with the uh, pick six and then the kickoff return. Uh, you take those two away with seven and seven. Right. And, uh, and now we've got a whole second half of football to play. Well, that's what we talked about, being 60-minute men. You know, take it one play at a time for four quarters for 60 minutes. So I thought the first half, you know, you take away the two plays, like you just talked about, we're still in the football game, and, and we felt that way. Mm -hmm. So our whole thing now was just go out and play route the football the second half, finish strong, and believe what we see and go from there. But uh, that, didn't ha that didn't happen, Keith. All right, Coach, let's go to third quarter highlights. And here we go. The Tigers are going to get the football. And, Coach, they know they're up 21-7. to And so the strategy is going to become – Take the ticks off the clock. Yeah, and uh, that's what they, they pretty much did. But I, I, I thought overall the defense still fought hard. Yeah. They got out there a little bit. Yeah. But we had some uh, adjustment uh, things that we couldn't do. Like right here, we wanted to be in our speed off defense. But, again, we couldn't make that adjustment because we didn't know what personnel was in the game. So we had to keep it base, and we can put as much pressure as we want to put on the quarterback yeah. by going man-to-man. -man. Because if you make that mistake, now you're looking at – linebackers on top of receivers. But that was a great play again by, uh, is that the Cree? Uh, Ojo. Ojo. Ojo was everywhere. Yeah. He was everywhere. Yeah, all Ojo over had a great game. He, he wasn't our defensive player of the game, but he was that close to being. <laughs> very, very active. Yeah. Very active. Yeah. Again, you know, we, we, we got to find a way to get off the field, but, you know, they came out and they did some things as far as in uh, different adjustments. You see they got the tight end line in the mm -hmm. backfield, and uh, it was 12 personnel. They did some things different. We had to make that adjustment, mm -hmm. but it was too late because now I got my dive defense in the game. Mm -hmm. And there we go. The Tigers now go up uh, 27 to 7, Coach. And then we're going to see a different formation uh, in the next uh, offensive series from Tennessee State where they go full house right. in the backfield. Right. Well, and it was hard to make that adjustment because you couldn't communicate. They, go, they got tight ends back there. Right. I think they line them up in the tight end position. They line them up in the fullback position. And it's kind of like we could never get ahead of the game. But, you know, overall, I thought the kids fault. You know, and, yeah. and again, we got to do a better job. And I say we. I'm talking about as far as just the, the coaches understanding what's going on and as far as having some headsets because it, it was tough out there. And I, we thought we did a great job during the week putting pressure on the quarterback. Yeah. We, we, that was a good job. You yeah. know, again, guys played hard. They, they really did. Despite of what's going on, guys played a great job there. Yeah. Great job there by Bobby Jackson on yeah, third Bobby down. Bobby Jackson had an outstanding game. And, uh, Coach, and you can see that the guys are giving you everything they got um, to uh, on defense to, you know, try and shut this thing down. Um, well, we, we knew it was going to be a defensive game. Mm -hmm. we, we felt like we had the better defense and uh, we was going to get out a little bit. But we kind of struggled on offense. And both offenses, did. we got we to gotta actually help each other. The offense got to complement the defense. The defense got to complement the offense. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is on defense, we're trying to go three and out. Mm -hmm. Offense, we're trying to put together some 16, 17 play drives. Guys still swarming to the ball. Yeah. yeah, in the second half. And one of the things that really stood out in the second half, Coach, is that Tennessee State wanted to control the clock. Mm -hmm. And the defense, although they were swarming to the ball and giving you everything they got, they are just out there too long in the third, uh, the third uh, fourth well, quarter. Most definitely. Again, we got to compliment each other. The offense got to put together some 15, 16 play drives to keep the guys off their feet. And, Keith, we didn't do that. But uh, overall, we'll look at it and uh, we'll come in to find out what's, what's good and what's bad. But... I like to say this and being honest with you, I, we're going to learn from this. Mm -hmm. we, we really are simply because guys went in there blind and they still find a way to compete and, fin and still find a way to finish strong. Now, we just got to get some things in-house corrected in, uh, as far as you know, communication mm -hmm. as well as, you know, Coach Gray was gone. We'd we love to have him back. He'll be back soon. So that's also another plus. Yeah, Coach, uh, this was an early season loss, and it's a non-conference mm -hmm. loss. So you saying that it's a, uh, one of those games where you can learn a lot of lessons from, and you start talking about looking at where your team starts and how it progresses. Certainly this is a, an opportunity, a teaching moment, if you will. It sure is. It sure is. And, uh, you know, you always want that W, but you always try to learn from the L's. And uh, there's a lot of coaching things we can show these kids as far as, you know, understanding what we're trying to get done, understand how people are going to attack us. But again, it's easier to come in here with a win and say, hey, we, did, we need to do this, that better. But to come in with a loss and you really might put that thing on a microscope, you can evaluate exactly what's going on, Keith. And I, again, I say the guys really played hard for 60 minutes, especially the defense. So we're going to make some adjustments on the offensive side of the ball as well as help those guys be successful. All right, Coach, we're going to come back with the players of the game and a whole lot more. But as we go to break, we're going to take a look at the final statistics of FAMU and Tennessee State. And we'll be right back after this time out on the Coach Earl Holmes Show.
you've been involved in an accident, you feel like today is going to be a bad day. You have headaches, neck pain, back pain. Well, call us here at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, where we have your neck and your back. Call me, Dr. Ways, at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab. We're located at 1711 South Gaston Street. Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, your local accident doctors. Call us at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, where you control your case. We got your neck and your back. I'm Mickey Clayton, executive director of the Randall Booster Club. The Randall Booster Club contributed $591,000 to the athletic department of Florida A&M University. Some of the things we were able to purchase this year was the Jumbotron, and we assisted with the scoreboard and the Al Lawson Center, and golf carts for our seasoned Rattler Booster supporters, pitching machine for the baseball team, the shooting machine for the basketball team. So the Rattler Booster program supports all athletic programs. Join the Booster Club. Call the Rattler Booster office at 850-224-6093. It's not too late. Welcome back to the Coach Earl Home Show. It's time now for the players of the game. And Coach on offense, Linworth Lennon. Five receptions, 66 yards, one touchdown, 36 long. That was the touchdown, Coach. Yeah, well, he and was he a spy finds plug. a way he to get a, over. He was a spy plug. Like I said earlier, him and Damian have done a great job of finding each other. We just got to get some other guys around the football as well so we can spread that thing out so we don't be one dimension as far as our go-to guy. Okay. Defensively, it was Mike Ducree got poked in the eye coach and, mm -hmm. you know, was out for just a minute, but came back to record 12 total tackles, 11 solo, one sack, and one tackle for loss. We talked about John Ojo. He was not our defensive player of the game, but we got to tell you what he did. 11 total tackles, nine solo, two assists, and a tackle for loss. Those guys are swarming. You know, and it starts up front. I thought uh, the defensive line competed, the linebacks competed. Again, we just got to help each other get off the field sooner and later. So uh, I tip my hat off to the defense. For the most part, I, I, I think we played an excellent job for us to stop in the run. But we got to be smart, and we just got to get off the field and find a way to do that. Uh, special teams coach, uh, a name we're going to hear a whole lot more from, Colby Blanton. Uh -huh. Seven punts, 315 yards, 45 yards per punt. 55 long and two inside the 20. This guy's going to be quite a player for you. Yeah, he is. I want. I don't want to use him as much, <laughs> but he is. Then anytime we have to punt the ball and change field positions, he's putting uh, some iron up under the ball so the guys can get down and cover. And again, two inside the 20, that's saying a lot because it's hard to drive 80 yards on our defense. And the punch was so high, Coach, we got great kick coverage. And guys were caught up for fair catches because there was no room to run. And that's how you win the football game. Anytime you can get people to play on their side of the ball and you got guys out there running and fair catching, they always help your special team category. All right, Coach, we're going to take a look at the MEAC scoreboard as we go to break. And we'll be back with more on the Coach Earl Home Show after this timeout.
Rattler Booster Program supports all athletic programs at the university. Join the Rattler Booster Club. It's not too late. You've been involved in an accident. You feel like today is going to be a bad day. You have headaches, neck pain, back pain. Well, call us here at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, where we have your neck and your back. Call me, Dr. Ways, at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab. We're located at 1711 South Gaston Street. Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, your local accident doctors. Call us at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, where you control your case. We got your neck and your back. Metron Contracting is a certified minority business specializing in the installation of commercial plumbing and underground utilities, including water, sewer, and fire line. Its owners, Caleb and Sharon Hanna, have over 30 years' experience in the Tallahassee area. Metron also offers installation of concrete sidewalks, erosion control, and construction management. On your next project, think Metron and call 850-681-9058. Again, 850-681-9058. Welcome back to the Coach Earl Home Show. Coach, uh, two games in a row, the Rattlers are going to be home in mm -hmm. Bragg Stadium. And we want Bragg Stadium to be the place where opponents fear coming right. because they know that the Rattler fans are going to be that 12th man in the stands and support this team and help us win. Well, that's very important. You know, that's very important. Anytime you can play at home, mm -hmm. play in your own backyard, you know, you have that momentum and you have that, that, that crowd noise. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the band. It's the fans as well, like I said earlier. So we need everybody to come out and, and support the team and watch how we rebound from this, this past game here. Yeah, Sanford uh, from the Southern Conference, mm -hmm. uh, a different team, not one that we're used to playing. But, Coach, this has a potential of really showing where we are and where we need to go. This is one of those kinds of games. It's one of those evaluation kind of games where you, you really learn what you got and, uh, and how you get them ready because we're, we're not too far away from conference play. Right, not at all. And it's kind of like have uh, playoff implications mm -hmm. on it because uh, they, they're from a good conference mm -hmm. and uh, they're well coached and they're going to take what, they, what, you, what, they, what you give them. So uh, we got to be smart on that half and uh, just go out and play Rattler football. But, again, um, they're, they're a good team. And uh, it's getting close to conference time, so now you want to really settle down and find out what type of team you are and what type of team you can become. Yeah, let's talk about, I don't think we had any significant injuries in the first two games, so we should be pretty healthy uh, as we go into game three. We are, we are, and, uh, you know, that's a good thing about guys just trying to stay healthy. Uh, we plan on the elements and guys doing a very good job. No one cramped up today, mm -hmm. which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we acclimated to the heat. We just got to make our opponents feel the heat as well as the field of crowd noise. All right, you can help the Rattlers make their opponents feel the heat by showing up to Bragg Stadium and being that 12th man in the stands. Of course, we want you to be there when you, to see the Rattlers take on the Sanford Bulldogs. And, of course, we'll have all of the highlights for you right here next week on the Coach Earl Holmes Show. We'll see you then. Thank you, Keith.